before you have sati and the understanding, you are totally heedless. Like the Buddha said, the heedless are as if dead. You cannot cope with life. You don't know what is happening. You just like a auto, auto gear type of reaction, habitual tendency, habitually reacting, reacting. So now you have the ability to be aware, to go into that mind, then the space between thought give you the understanding of what that true mind is, the silent mind is. So that one is aware. That's why it can see. The moment of perception, it can be there, then gone. But it moves very fast. So you have to stabilize that. So as you cultivate and go through the cultivation and the training, you develop more and more stability. Then when the stability or the sati is there, you realize the spiritual faculty comes in, take over. Well, your faith becomes stronger. Your faith comes from the understanding that your sati bring forth. Then you start to be able to comprehend the Dhamma, link up everything. Then you can put it to test. You can investigate into it. Then you realize the teaching of the Buddha is so beautiful. Dhammapada was one and two. Dhammapada was one and three. And all the essential Dhamma that the Buddha mentioned, the mental hindrance, the spiritual faculty, the factors of enlightenment, the three evils. So all this, you will start to develop understanding because of that mindfulness. That's the, thing. That's the reason why I say without mindfulness, there is no real wisdom, no real awakening. You need to stabilize your mindfulness, especially daily mindfulness and the nature's awareness within the silent mind. If you are most of the time lost in thought, heedless means you don't have the spiritual faculty. You can be easily sway and react to sense experience. Not until you have a very stable daily mindfulness, then most of the time you are with your true mind. You are just silent, aware. You perceive then you move, then you leave, you leave, and you are less reactive really. Means the sense experience that arise, the normal heedless reaction to sense experience, pleasant, unpleasant, like and this, like, you realize that one has diminished. And finally, more or less, like you hardly do it anymore, rooted out. But you have seen them, you have seen the Dhamma. And the Dharma awaken you. Their condition like that, things will be like that. So you straighten your view. People are just the way they are. Then there are causes and conditions behind everything that arise. Then the Buddha's word become very clear. Like he said, we are all born of our karma, heir to our karma, conditioned and supported by our karma. We are what we are because of our karma. Then you reflect back, hey, yeah, whatever that arise, like the Buddha said, there are causes and conditions. And since we are born of our karma, heir to our karma, conditions supported by our karma, and we are what we are because of our karma, then it has definitely a lot to do with our karma. So we accept. Right view with regards to law of karma, we accept. Uh, when I accept, I don't blame people. I don't react anymore. I don't say all those wrong things. I don't react to what happened anymore. I become different. Then I tell myself, it is this karma. I reap what I sow. It's fair, isn't it? There is no such thing as how can that guy do that to me? How can the world be so unfair to me? How can God be like that? No more. That's why you no more complain. You will have the wisdom to accept the reality. Then you ask yourself, what actually happened? If this is karma, what must I do? I must do what I have to do. So I just develop the understanding and move. So I act. I don't react from memory anymore. I act following Noble Eightfold Path, following wisdom as taught by the Buddha, the Dhamma way. So when I act according to wisdom, means all of the Yoniso Manasikara or uh, wisdom born of the direct seeing and the sati, I start to straighten my view and change the way I live my life. 
then I start to be at peace with all things. Then when I understand that, I will apply noble evil power. Okay, right view. With regards to law of karma, I accept. Then I do what I have to do. So what must I do? I need to apologize. I apologize. I need to develop the repentance. I do the repentance. Then I vow not to repeat all these wrong things from now onwards. I vow to keep my precept, to follow the advice of the Buddha, to cultivate wholesomeness, to purify my mind, to meditate, to develop wisdom. Then when I do that, the merits, the blessing, the wholesomeness, all will surface. Where you have followed the advice of the Buddha to avoid all evil. So your karmic nature becomes beautiful. Your life changed. Everything changed. Then after that, over a certain period, maybe three months or so, you will have enough parami or wholesomeness or what they call merits for you to do the third thing. You invoke power of merits for causes and conditions for you to recover from whatever that happened, for you to turn around so that your life can return to normal, so that you can become a true cultivator to follow the Dhamma way again. Then you can express your gratitude, your respect, your joy, your contentment, your understanding. Then never go back to the old way, which is heedless living. So all this understanding will surface. That's why you feel so much joy. Eh? You are so different now. Despite all the accidents you go through, despite all the hospitalization, you are so beautiful, and it turned out to be a blessing, this guy, like you told me. You got more time to listen to the Dhamma, to the sharing, and to read the transcript book. And you have progressed well. My nature rejoiced. Sadhu to you. And now you can understand much more than last time. <laughs> Brother Theo, can I just add yeah. something? Can, can you add? If yeah. I listen to you, I, I, my, my, I'm in stillness and in oh, calmness. Sadhu. Sadhu, and there is no thought. Sadhu. I mean, now I talk, of course the thought comes up, but I'm listening to you. There is no thought. The listening is now from the heart. Yeah, because you are, you are attentive from that true mind, that nature. And, That's why the and, listening is from the vibration that go in and the understanding of it there, that it can absorb very fast. Like you have no thought. Not yeah. only you, quite a number of Kayamita who has progressed, they can do it now. And on top of that, the awareness is coming out from the heart, going up all correct, over correct, and correct. joining up with the consciousness. Yeah, yeah. And then, yeah, then yeah. it's a freedom, you know. Yeah. Where I don't have to be attached to oh, what's this uh, thing that I have to think this, about. Oh, this that no yeah, more. The phenomenal world has no power over you. It no longer can deceive you into negativity of action, speech, and thought. That is the beauty. That's why that joy comes from there. You see everything clearly. The phenomenon of consciousness is really an illusion. Where you know Mandarin. This one will stand out. Then, All this surface beautifully. Then you understand. Then after that, your nature will arise. Then from there, the heart will open up. And more and more things will happen. Then you, when you meditate after that, the, the gateway there, it will slowly, slowly open. Uh, then when the gateway open, you will move in and transform again. Because that one is for the higher cultivation, the Bodhisattva way and all say. So ability to go to the heart is very important. Like now, you are able to go there. You are starting to develop the ability to be aware from there. Then it is from that ability to be aware from there that you go into your nature, the gateway, everything. So the cultivation finally will drop to the heart. Then the awareness at the heart is very important. Until you can stabilize it, then finally silence everything to locate the gateway. And then the whole cultivation will become very clear to you. Mm. Sadio, eh? Jay. Brother Theo, lastly, it is as though there is full absorption. When you're talking, 
the, yeah. the what you are saying, the absorption is very yeah. strong. It's like you 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 sort of accept it. Yeah, and, and it like draw into your nature. Yeah, uh, that's, because yeah, so, that's what cultivator is able to. All the great beings' nature, they are ever radiating for the cultivator of the way. So when you have the understanding, you will listen attentively with the faith, sada virya. Then that thing will enable you to draw. We are sada virya together with the sati. It will draw the spiritual faculty. Yeah, there is joy. There is understanding. Then all this has meaning to you. That's why you are able to do that. Sadhu to you. <laughs> Sadhu. Uh. And everybody can do it. If I, I can do it, everybody yeah, can do just it. Just like Putin <laughs> say, yeah. Because now a lot of Kayamita, they have faith because they realize a lot of people whom they uh, know in the early days, they are ordinary cultivators with nothing special. But finally, when they connect, when they have the condition, they transform. That's why, especially after Po Cheng transform, a lot of people have confidence and faith. Like Po Cheng said, I know next to nothing. He said, the first two retreat, he, he asked a lot of questions. Well, that time, she don't know. She admits she don't know. She's very new to all this. That, but the moment she become very serious, dead serious, is before the MCO uh, end of previous year, not last year, where she determined to go all out to cultivate and she listened attentively to all my sharing and she followed you know, word by word you know, and do. You know. That one really transformed her and changed her. That's why she progressed very fast. Then when she heard that the retreat last year was cancer, not able to hold, she at first was like that unhappiness was there. Are you what a waste? I prepare everything. Then later on, she continued to listen to my heart sutra sharing. Then like I mentioned, it turned out to be a blessing in this guy. Because now I no need to rush over the heart sutra in eight days or nine days retreat. I can slowly do it over a period of eight months to nine months. And that one, the sharing becomes so clear to her. And she developed the daily practice at home. And she did it diligently. And she was able to penetrate and realize a lot of beautiful things. She even went to her heart area and the nature opened up. And a lot of things happened in the transformation process. That's why there is so much joy. Like you say, very true. Right? You can do or almost guarantee everybody can do. So it's not a matter of you have to be born special, you must have special path. But now the sasana is there. The Buddha sasana is there. The teaching is there. And our nature's consciousness, Kayamita force, they are there. And this is the best window. That's why I call it the golden age, the golden age, the golden opportunity the best window for cultivation. So this life, with this understanding, if you all develop the faith, the sincerity, then persevere, cultivate, and determine, and make vows and aspiration following the Bodhisattva way, the yellow card, your future cultivation will be sealed, confirmed, guaranteed. So this understanding will follow you life after life whenever you arise choose to arise or have to come. So all this is the purpose of my nature's mission, this life coming. That's why Maitreya, uh, he make the request in 2008. So now it's year 13, but he has progressed very well. Ever since he mentioned that, uh, things just happen, uh, conditions just arise. Uh, that a lot of things uh, become very different. Then I realized I didn't do anything. The people come, the condition come. Those who are supposed to understand and benefit, they all come. That's why the new batch after 2008, these are the people with affinity and condition. And when they come, they really benefit. Mm. So, Sadhu, 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 thank you.